Uh, and this is in 2 Timothy. So this is Paul writing from prison. This is actually the last letter that he wrote before he was killed uh, in Roman prison. And he wrote it to his little brother, Timothy. Um, but this is what he wrote. He said, In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. So how does this play out in my life with my little brothers? I can't tell you, I mean, lots of different things, but just to give you a couple examples, Friday night. My wife goes to bed, I'm downstairs watching TV, flipping through the channels, I see the Cinemax channel, right? And there's nothing good on that late at night on the Cinemax channel, right? And I'm sitting there watching TV and I get that little voice in my ear that says, hey, let's just see what's going on there. Just, we'll just glance, right? We'll just glance and see what's going on there. But I know on Saturday morning I'm going to come in here and some of my little brothers are going to say, hey, I need you to pray for me or I need you to speak truth into my life. And I can't stick out my left hand if it's dirty, and I can't stick out my left hand if it's weak. So I have to keep myself right with God. And if I'm completely honest with you, if it wasn't that way, there are times where, just because I'm naturally a selfish person, I would probably let my relationship with God waver. Uh, but when I know that I've got to have this left hand out there for the guys that are holding on to that, it's not just about me anymore. And that's another way that it keeps you fixed on your trajectory towards God when you have both hands connected. Uh, this week, just yesterday, you know, we had breakfast and I was sitting around a group of table with a lot of guys who uh, I've been very fortunate. I'm not their only big brother by any means, but I've been able to invest a little bit of time into these guys' lives. And yesterday, as I'm, they're going around the table and they're talking, you know, one guy on this past Tuesday night got to lead his first guy to Christ. Uh, and he was all pumped up about that. And he had been in kind of a rough spot before that and asked God to use him, and God did. Uh, so he was all excited about that. And then the guy over here to my left, he had been looking at a list of names of people that he wanted to talk to about God. Uh, and he said, you know, I decided not to start at the top. It's an upside down kingdom, so I'm going to flip it over. He said, I went down to the bottom name on the list, and that's the guy that God wanted me to talk to. And it was a guy that he had a long history of not getting along with or whatever. And after a few minutes of talking, they were hugging each other, you know, and talking about God. Uh, and then another one of my brothers was... Uh, he had done something and hurt someone really, really badly in the past, and we had talked about it this week. And uh, he made the decision to go talk to him, to, to make that right and apologize. And it was a dangerous discussion. I mean, he really, really hurt this person. But it went well, and it turned into a God conversation. And so I'm listening to all these stories, and I'm so encouraged. And I just couldn't help but think about those aspen trees how under the table we were all connected. All of our roots were connected and we were exchanging nutrients back and forth. And the nutrients were prayer, they were encouragement, and pointing each other back towards God. And I thought, you know, if we could have this here on Saturday mornings, if we could have this on Monday evenings, and even step back a bit further, if we could have this in, at Blue Ridge, what if every single guy at Blue Ridge had one hand forward, one hand back, you know, if God can do that with trees, imagine a group of guys, a group of his children, 47,000 strong, one hand forward, one hand back, running towards God. All right, questions for today. You can flip them over now. <laughs> And for some of you, you may have more than one. That's fine. You're one of the lucky ones. Uh, what does your relationship look like? And what we're after here, guys, is we're trying to learn from each other. Are you texting each other? Are you going out to lunch together? Do you talk during the week? You know, what's that relationship look like? So we can get an idea of what a big brother relationship looks like here at the table. Give examples of things that you've learned from him, some things that he's helped you with you in your life. If you don't have one, why not? Maybe you've had a bad experience in the past where you tried to have someone disciple you or someone that was telling you things to do and it went bad. They took advantage of you. Talk about that. 
who is your little brother? What have you learned from helping him? How has helping a little brother helped you move closer towards God? What does your relationship look like? Once again, how often do you guys talk? Do you get together? How's that work? Do you just reach out to him when you're in trouble? I mean, let's talk about that. And if you don't have one, why not? Why don't you have a little brother? Are you afraid that uh, you're not qualified? Uh, you're afraid you're not sure what that relationship looks, is supposed to look like. Okay? So keep it real today, guys. Once again, this discussion is today. All of us as individuals, we need to be intentional with this. And I really think the future of this group depends upon it. Uh, so leave the religious junk in the parking lot. Keep real with each other. One, two, three, go.